we are at Mesa Verde National Park. This is an extremely large park. We weren't really prepared for how big this park is going to be. So hang with us. We're going to show you kind of a recording of a local who discusses the history of the area. This happened to be somebody who was talking while we were buying some fry bread. Uh, but also we'll show you the, some of the cliff dwellings, the overlooks, the pit homes, the uh, play clothes. There's a lot to see out here. We'll show you all we can. And check it out. If you need to RV or camp, we'll show you. Well, not in this video, but check out our channel for a great place to RV a mile from this park. So from the first lookout, as you come up this road, you can just see for miles snow-covered mountains and a huge valley below. So a few miles in, you'll get to the top of the mountain, basically the top, and there's the Knife Edge Cafe, a general store, coin laundry, bathroom, showers, and a gas station. This is also, I guess, the area of the camping check-in if you're camping up here. We will now put it in fast forward so we can make our way to the next overlook. It's going to go through this cool tunnel here, wrap up the hill, and we'll be there. We were just at Mancos Valley Overlook. This is Montezuma, if I'm saying that correctly, Valley Overlook. We just went through a tunnel that took the place of a really short, small, steep road that used to be here as the only way to get up to the ruins. Now we're going to make our way to the next stop, which is going to be where the ranger station used to be for a fire lookout. It's the highest spot on the park. Pretty cool road with great scenery as you're making your way up. Now looking inside the ranger station up here at Park Point. This is the highest viewpoint on the park. And in the past, they used to have a ranger stationed here 24 hours a day from May until September. I got to fast forward as we go about another mile down the road, let you kind of see the scenery as we come up on what would be the next turnoff. Farview Lodge registration. Here's the Farview Center. So this is about, I'm guessing now, about 12 miles. This is the A-pillar. Weathermill Mesa says it's closed. There is a gift shop. You come up to these different areas where there's been fires, they've got them labeled. This is a fire, the Long Mesa fire from 2002. Crazy to know how it's been over 20 years and the growth that came back is still just the undergrowth. Heading to the museum and the spruce tree house. We are now in the overlook that is next to the museum. This is an overlook that is looking down onto the cliff dwellings. Now this will be a self-guided tour. So the Water Mesa area was closed. We came down here to the Spruce Tree House. If you come to the Spruce Tree House, it's, I believe, the only self-guided tour to take you down through the dwellings, but it is also closed this time. So we'll keep going, see what we find. A few things here in the museum. ancestors built homes, places for ceremonies and gatherings. It was long ago, but these places are not empty. The spirits of the house, we say hello. Some ask permission to enter. People from throughout the world come here and I hope one of the takeaways should be that the descendants are still here. These places remain special and sacred to us. 
another restaurant and gift shop over here. This is the parking lot for the museum and the Spruce Treehouse. So just know that if you want to get tickets, you should definitely do that. We did not think we would have to get tickets at this big national park to do a drive or a walk, self-guided tour. Turns out the self-guided tour, as I said, was closed and the guided tours are sold out for several days in advance. So, plan ahead. Now we're going to head to the next stop. The next stop is where the first guided tour would be, but without tickets, you still have a really cool overview. You can pause, pick up on a little bit of history here, and then take a look here on just how well developed this was. And after hundreds of years and people walking through, checking it out every day, it still is preserved in such a pristine, really a pristine condition, all things considered. But this was a thriving little village in this cliff dwelling. Uh, there was an exit to the far right, the ladder that actually comes out of there. Now this is at our next stop, the house of many windows. Now look at it. Do you see it yet? It is in this cliff and it's on the ledge, built on that ledge. And all these years later, it's still there. You see another one in that upper right corner just a second ago. And I'll pan out so you can kind of look down this valley and see just how high up and what their view would be like. And as you leave the House of Many Windows, you can come over here to the Mesa Verde Soda Point. Come over here and get yourself some fresh fry bread. Maybe. We'll see. Check out the old school bathrooms. Part, uh, um, yep, I found it. <laughs> Miss was once a part of the new uh, mountain, new tribe or reservation, but Congress took it away from us. But then they realigned the road here. The road originally went around the um, rim of the um, of the um, of the cluster here. here. Um, but the people that were here were no relation to us. They were Hopis. What happened was that, you see, the kibas here are circular. They left beans, corn, and water as offerings and closed them up. They moved out and headed south to present-day Hopi land. These were Hopi people. How we know the Hopi people? They left their stories on the petroglyph panels that were on the walls of these canyons, these cliffs. That's where their stories are told here. Once they got down to Hopi land, you see these circular kivas here transformed down there into square kivas. Today, all of their kivas are square, symbolizing that they completed their fourth and final migration. They spiritually migrated from here. By 1300, there was no one around here. No hope. Um, why? It's a part of, part of what they were um, prophecies, their teachings, in the 1960s, they were told to tell the world that all four Hopi prophecies had come true. The nine nations didn't let them in the door. So in the 1980s, the actor John Boyd held a conference on behalf of the Hopi elders, telling them that all four Hopi prophecies had come true. These first two came true way back to him mentioned it. But these last two, the spider has spun its web all over the world. The last one, the sun has reached the earth. 80s, it turned out the road wide web. Sun reaching the earth, the depletion of the ozone layer. These type of policies are coming true in a way, but with the particular, in particular the Hopi, their stories are, you can, they can, you can find it through the Book of Hopi by Frank Waters. Okay, they tell you all about what happened here to all of these people. These things aren't really supposed to be all be told, all of these things, are, but things have happened in these past decades for all these secrets, all of these things to be told. Now. My companion, my grandkids, grandmother there, she's Navajo, Dene. All of their prophecies have come true. They have seven of them. 
this one. But I just share with you a few of them that I know. Is that um, nice. one day all well, an the animals will yes, start talking? Nine to years. Uh -huh. um, we're going to speak one language. language. Someday okay. all us humans will speak one language. Um, uh, the corn's going to stop growing. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, it does. Another one. Like man, yes. man, a really good idea. Thank you. Man is going to be walking around talking to himself. Thank you. <laughs> and this one. How would you like You're not going to tell the difference between um, a man and sweet, a woman. Sweet. Is there a man? Uh, this is the eye. The air is good. This one is my eye. In my language, you. I might. This is my might. Nine years. Right here. Thank my you. My daughter wants uh, me to talk. And I She's said, a no. language oh, yeah. teacher. Oh, 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 oh. I said, imagine how many people. You bring up the back seat. Uh, uh, okay. 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 This one is Toya. Toya. Yeah. Toya. Yeah. Toya. Yeah. Toya. No. Dr. Yeah. Cortez is yeah. a town a called Toya. And, a five. and you, I mean, right. thank you. Thank you, Colorado. Don't argue with the boss. I'm going to get fired. You came on the East Reservation. We're going to give you a band of youth. To the East Reservation, the Southern Youth Reservation, they're comprised of two bands of youth, the Mowat and the Capote. There you go. They originally come from around Denver, all over northern New Mexico. We win this band from Pagosa Springs to Grand Junction, Colorado. That's our home. The United States government, under the wheel or the dog that created the individual allotment. The individual allotment, we used to not believe in ownership of land. Oh, thank you. So when the dog or the allotment had came through with the southern use, we used to, we do not believe in ownership of land. They said, or chief said, how can you say you own that tree, or how can you say you own that rock when you didn't create it? We're only here to take care of it because it takes care of us. Surprisingly, the United States government recognized our belief in our philosophy and ownership of that and created this reservation a separate reservation, an open reservation. That's why we call our home, our home, the town. Toya, Toya, thank you. Now we drive down the road and come to the next stop. This is the next overlook. And you can see there is another, you've got to zoom in on it here. There is another dwelling right there. This is the balcony house. This is a spot you can meet a ranger and go down if you have tickets in advance. We did not have tickets. Now at that point in the left is the soda trail. You can walk out and look back at it. We did not do that. Checking out the pit house from 600 AD. So we put them around the perimeter mm -hmm. of the site here. And uh, that's where eventually the rooms that they built up on top would take the place of those in the next century or so. And then another, I call this rectangular room, the mud yeah. room, oh. yeah. <laughs> and storage. Um, these are going to be warm in the winter time because yeah. they're partially below ground, yeah. and then cool in the summertime. Yeah. yeah. And we do see pit houses continuing into the 11 and 1200s. Yeah. We are now down in Navajo Canyon Overlook. We are now at the Square House Overlook. Now to the pit houses and play blows. The second village is a lot more detailed, obviously. Little building lesson right here. I'll pan over so you can take a look and then we'll head to the next spot. 
And now the Mesa top sights, 900 to 1100. Some of it here on the outside and you come inside for a more detailed area. And a little information. And we'll pan over here to the other side. And now we are at the Sun Point Playblow from 1200. So we can get down here and see the connection to the other side. Sun Point View. Now let's move on and we'll see even more structures. As we're driving at this point, you don't drive very far before you come to another overlook that's going to show you more dwellings. The Indians were scattered all over this land, obviously several families, several communities uh, spaced out, living successfully and thriving in this area. An idea of what we just videoed. Obviously, you see the Cliff Palace, which we videoed earlier, which is now over here. When we were standing right up there. And the Oak Tree House. And the fire temple view area. So you can see these structures fairly well from all these different overlooks, but obviously you would be better off if you have binoculars. So when you come here, plan on bringing binoculars so when you get to these sites, you can view them from your binoculars uh, besides just by standing at the overlook. And over to the Sun Temple from 1250. If you walk just over here, you can get a view of the Cliff Palace. And here's video looking from where we were just about a minute ago. A little information here, and then let's walk over and take a view, looking in these little windows that we can see, and we'll take a look over the top. Pretty amazing looking at these structures, seeing how this is held together this well after all these years, the weather, the heat, the cold. Let's walk around to the other side. But first, let's take a look over yeah. the top. Go around to the other side to where you can stand on the top and look in from that side. And as we come around, you can see the Cliff Palace. Now on the top side view of the Sun Temple. Very cool, you can see how 
it's all shaped to catch the water. And obviously they must have had something to catch the water to store it periodically all the way around the structure. This wraps up our trip to Mesa Verde National Park. If you want to see everything in the park and you want to go on the tours with the rangers down into the cliff dwellings, you better plan on at least a couple days here. Maybe camp here on site or up in the lodge. All right, thanks for watching. Check out this cool road that we're driving on here. Huge drop-offs everywhere and guardrails holding you in. Remember, life is building you, it's not breaking you. Thanks for watching.